Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we will be talking about principal component analytics, how we can construct an index using the um, principal component analytics. So before we demonstrate how we can do that on a stata, and I will be explaining what do we mean by principal component analytics. So first and foremost, the principal component analytics is a fast and flexible unsupervised method for dimensionality reductions in data it can also be used for visualizations, noise filtering, feature extractions, and feature engineering. So, principal component analytics is mostly useful when data features are highly correlated. So, basically, the idea of PCA is to reduce the numbers of variables of a data set while preserving as much information as possible. So, these PCAs are new variables that are constructed as linear combinations or mixtures of the initial variables. And this is because smaller data are easier to explore and visualize and make analytics um, much more easier and faster for machine learning algorithms without extraneous variables to process. So um, what are the uses of PCA? PCA? The first one we'll be considering in this video is PCA for feature extractions. So PCA is basically known as feature extraction techniques as it helps to rearrange the features by the linear combinations. And then one of the characteristics of PCA is that the first principal component holds the most information about the data set and that the second principal component holds more informative um, um, about the third and also the third holds more information about the uh, fourth um, principal component and so on. So the next thing we'll also be looking at is the PCA for dimension reductions and as we hold the PCA component and new variables that are constructed as linear combinations or mixtures of the initial variables. So organizing information in principal component allows reduction dimensionality without losing much information about your data set and thereby discarding the component with low information and considering the remaining components um, as your new variables. So what we'll be discussing next is what are the steps involved in computing a principal component analysis. So the first step we'll be looking at is known as the standardizations, which we also termed as normalizations of our data set. So the idea of this step is to standardize the range of the continuous initial variables so that each of them contribute equally to the analysis. So standardizations also involves transforming the data set, normalizing your data set or variables to comparable scales to prevent biased results. So once the standardization is done, all the variables will be transformed to the same scales. So the next step we'll be looking at is computation of the covariance matrix. So the aim of this step is to understand how the variables of the input data are varying from the main with respect to the each other. So covariance matrix helps to check if there's any relationships between the variables we're using to construct the index. So one of the most important things that we do in computation of covariance matrix is to check for the signs of the covariance. And we have the positive signs and the negative signs. So the positive signs implies the positive relationships and it implies that these two variables either increases or decreases together. The negative signs implies the negative relationships and this implies that as one variable increases, the other variable decreases, thereby having a inverse relationships. So the other steps we'll also be looking at is the, the computation of the hidden vectors the agent values of the covariance matrix. So the agent vectors and the agent values are computed for the covariance matrix in order to determine the principal component of the data. So every agent vector has agent values and the number is always equal to the numbers of the dimensions of your data. So agent vectors and agent value that gives the amount of the variance carried in each principal component across your data set. So by ranking your agent vectors, in order of their agent values from the highest to the lowest, you'll be able to get the principal components in order of their significance. So the fourth step is known as the feature vectors. So in this step, we decide whether to keep this component or discard those of the lesser significance of low agent values. And one of the ways that we can do this is to plot the script plot, the script plot with episodes to determine which of these components are we keeping for our data set. So the feature vector is simply a matrix that has the columns, the hedging values, the hedging vectors of the component 
that we decide to keep. And this is the first step towards di um, dimensionality reductions. So the last step is to recast the data along the principal component axis. So the aim of this is to use the feature vector formed from the agent vectors of the covariance matrix to reorientate the data from the origin axis to the one represented by the principal component. And then mathematically, this can be done by multiplying the transpose of the original data set by the transpose of the feature vectors. So these are the steps in computing the principal component analysis. So what we'll be doing next is to demonstrate how we can construct an index using the principal component analysis and we will, we will be using this data for these demonstrations. So now let's go back to our data. So this is our data software. We have the history over here. We have the output panel. We have the command. We also have the variable panel over here and also the properties. So one thing about the data is you can either use the statistics, the manual statistics or the command sections for your estimation parameters. And so let's go back to our data set. So this is our data set. We are constructing an index for these three variables, the size, the turnover, the volume, the size, the turnover and the volume of an organization. So what you need to do is to highlight this um, data and press Ctrl A, Ctrl A and Ctrl C. Ctrl C is to copy the data set and then click on your data, click on data editor and click on data editor edit automatically brings data editor spreadsheet and you press Ctrl V and you also do you want to treat the first rows as a variable names of data? Yes, the first rows. So this is our, our data set in our data editor. So automatically it appears in our data. So let's go back to our data software. Yeah, this is our data software. So check your variables. We have the size, the turnover, the volume. We also have all our data set is already on the data. So from the steps in computation of the PCH, the first thing that we need to do is to standardize our data set. So the essence of standardization, it helps us to normalize our data set because some of them may not be of the same scale. So standardization helps us to have the same scale, the same measurement for all our data set in the, uh, for all our data set for in order to avoid spurious or biased results. So how can we do that? Let's click on data, create or change. So also go to create new variables extended. And then what's our new variable? Let's generate a new variable, which is let's give it as a new size. And what is the high agent functions? Let's click on the standardized values. That will be our functions to normalize our data set. Then the expressions, you click on these expressions and you go to your variable names and you click it twice. Automatically, it appears on the expressions. So the next you need to do is to click on OK. So as you can see, this is our new variables on the variables panel. So as you can see, this is the command. So let us try the command aspect instead of using the statistics. Just copy this, pull it in the command sections. So change this. Let's try to standardize turnover. Change this to turnover and also change this to turnover. That's done, then press enter. So automatically it has also been standardized. So now let's do that for the third one. The third one, which is the volume. Standardized volume. Press enter as well. So all our three variables have been standardized. So for you to check, you can always click on the data editor. So this is our new our variables that has been standardized. We have the end size, end turnover, and end volume. So if you look through all these variables, you will see that most of them falls under the same range, the same range. And this is to avoid a bias or a spurious result. So the next thing we'll also be looking is to the computations of the um, covariance matrix, the agent vectors, and the agent values before we compute our PCA. So you click on statistics, 
to go to motivate analysis you click on principal component analytics you click on pca so under the pca you highlight all the variables you want um, for your analysis and you, you need to highlight the new variables the hand size you click on control click on turnover and volume and then you go to model your model maximum number of specific component xc1 then use covariance instead of correlation matrix then if you also want to measure the vc of the agent values by the coefficient and so on you also compute vc so about for this video we we'll always we we'll only be using the covariance instead of the correlation matrix then you also check this check the weight check the reporting check the advance check the model once again and then you click on ok so this is our result we have the component the three components component one component two and component three we also have the agent values this is 2.9 the difference is the difference between the agent values of the first component and the agent values of the second component and this proportion is the proportion of each of the components and the cumulative proportions so as you can also see this is the component principal component of the agent vectors uh, the variables and size turnover and volume and this implies that this proportion of n size in, in, the, in the component one is 57 percent the proportion of turnover in the component one is 57 percent as well and also the proportion of n volume for the first component is 57 percent so the other thing that we can also do before we finally construct our index to determine the number of principal components is to construct the script plot the script plot will also help us to determine the number of the components to use for our analysis so the next thing we'll also be doing is the computation of the script plot so you click on statistics you click on multiverse analysis you go to your principal component and you go to your post estimations and you click on script plot of the hedging values so automatically it will bring a panel showing obtain agent values from the previous estimation commands so the previous commands would be um, the basis for the estimation of our agent values I click on OK so automatically the script plot brings out the the, the graphs and this graph will help us to determine the number of proportions or principal components to use for our analysis so it's going to take a while to come up and once it's come up yeah this is our script plot as you can see the the y axis is the hedging values why the um, s axis is the number of the proportions we have the one proportion component one principal component two and principal component three as you can see the these graphs implies that the highest proportional components that comprises all the data set is the first one which is as which is start from this um, line tree and as so, so from this graphs it implies that we should only make use of only one principal component so the next thing that we'll also be doing is after determining that we should choose the principal component one which is what we did today in this um in this principal component analysis so the next thing is to predict uh, or to construct an index so how can we construct an index you need to go to the command the command sections type predict hefty predict hefty and you click on enter so this predictions is based on the first on the uh, principal component one which comprises of the size 57 percent turnover 57 percent and the volume 50 57 percent so if you want to see the predictions or the construction of the index that you've created you click on the data editor so this is our heavy is the index that we've constructed based on the three data set the size the turnover and the volume so in a nutshell principal component helps us to reduce our data sets instead of focusing on three variables it helps us to construct a particular index which we can use for our data analysis so the first step you need to do is to standardize your data set after standardizations the next thing 
is for you to construct the covariance matrix, the hagen vectors, and the hagen values. And the next thing you need to do is to also um, construct your script plot to determine the number of components to use for your study. And the final thing you need to do is to predict or to construct and then an index. So thank you for watching. In my next video, I will be explaining how we can estimate exploratory factor analysis also using Stata. Thank you.